make a hesitation move, and, and the goaltender was left pretty helpless on that one. And Billy Maine gets the ball for the Sun Devils. Just look at the basic lapse of defense right there. So here's another face-off. Stanford are going to have to find a way to win some in the face-off X if they want to come up uh, with the wins over Zach Andy. And you see right now a scrum at the face-off X. And coming up with it looks like Zach Long pitched ahead and uh, set it off to the right there. And Stanford has it for a moment, but Andy's right there for the ground ball. This one is still loose, finally coming up with it for the Stanford Cardinal. Was a long stick maybe Carter Kimball. And that's actually a midfielder. So Stanford now going to get set up on offense, and we'll get a chance to see their unit in play. More, Montana Morris has it in the near side corner, gets it back to X, where Jonathan Baxt holds it up top now. Getting a chance to see this. ASU defense in action. Wow, nice move made right there. Wide open shot. Rufon is able to send it aside and is picked up for a moment but finally lost. That shot attempt coming off the stick of Peter Doyle. And you're going to hear that name quite a lot in today's action. So just right away, why? All over. He has two defenders draped all over and pulls one of the over and kicks off a nice shot from the front. It's a long bounce shot. Getting low. Protecting the lower half of the net as well as he could. So now the ASU offense back in their half of the field as you see Zach Mathian check off the field and coming on and the midfield is Cooper Piquel. Off to Kyle Denis who takes a shot. Quick save made though by Josh Giglio. Josh Giglio is senior out of Foothill and uh, that means he, he must have been teammates with Zach Handy and Cooper Piquel out at Foothill High School. They're a powerhouse locally in Orange County. So Stanford gets another chance at redemption here as bringing it in is Eric Lee. He'll slow things up a little bit from behind the net. Neil Hamamoto, who is posted. Looking back up top is Lee. Norris to Hamamoto. Hamamoto looks up top. Stanford slowing things on, getting their matchups out there. You can still hear that ASU defense, though, uh, making those, those chants along the sideline. They are very amped up. This is a, a renovated, excited team. That's a good thing to see when you go through so much change in the offseason. But for Stanford, uh, they've got some depth as well. It's not as obvious as the ASU sideline, but, but uh, expect to see a lot of substitutions made in this game as we get deeper into it. Yeah, their depth comes in their experience and the number of seniors that they haven't touched before. Eric Lee finds an opening. Nice pass across the way, right in front of the crease. And Rufonis able to stick that one aside. Nice pass, but even a better reception than almost an attempt to get the shot off by Max. Working around from X is Hamamoto. Hamamoto faced some defense from Nathan Blair. Cal did have some success yesterday on ASU getting in front of the net right for Rufonis and Rufonis. Just honestly just settling in there now. Peter Doyle drives the isolation. He works his way through two men, finds an opening, takes a shot that one off the mark. And remember, please tweet at us if you have any thoughts on the game at Trey Lanthier. I can read out anything that's appropriate to be read out on the air. As ASU nursing a 1-0 lead. Unfortunately, we do not have a clock on this field right now. So if you're not hearing any time updates, don't worry. We're in the same boat as you are. A drive put on there from Lee. Lost track of it, though. And this one's going to be a turnover going ASU's favor. One possession for Stanford right there. And they got a couple shots off. Unable to make to force the finals to make the save. And get those on net, especially when you get three or four shots off of the sequence. Cooper Piquel brings into the box for the Sun Devils and must slow things up now as they get their matchups on the field. Tyler Buck on for the Sun Devils with Henry Archie and Finn Wells. Henry Archie really shown in yesterday's game as a player who's made significant strides. He was primarily a short stick defender last year, uh, didn't see too much time on the field, and this year he's looking to be one of the key pieces of depth to this Sun Devil midfield. Yeah, the depth at the midfield and on offense. 
there, and so is the experience. They did lose two guys, but the majority of their of their uh, highest goal scorers, besides the second and third leading goal scorers, are, are still on this roster. And here's Archie right now taking a shot. That one a little bit high, but Billy Maine was back for it. And Davis, the obvious one there, the all American 59 goals a year ago, but. Pass inside for Davis, but he was a bit too beyond the net to come up with anything there. Finn Wells to Tyler Buck. As you said, Kell and Denise, they're two guys with 29 and 23 goals apiece on the team last season. And Adam, who's doing a lot of beach, and he was taking the year off. But Billy Maine and a couple of guys. Finn Wells has an open. He takes a shot, that one off the ground, but it missed the net. However, now a struggle for the ground ball. They're going to give this one to Giglio. So Stanford comes up with a big stop on defense. ASU does get a couple quality opportunities. Now Stanford trying to make the clear. ASU with a tough rock. But Stanford able to successfully clear it in their offensive side. Montana Boris with it now being faced with defense from Mitchell Drake. Mitchell Drake actually went down for a couple minutes in yesterday's game before he was able to get up and walk off the field under his own power. Seems like he's okay. Got sandwiched between a couple of tall players. Up top with it for the Cardinal, Hunter Urban gets it across on the left side. Working from X is Jonathan Baxt. Tried for a pass, that one all the way out. It's going to trickle out to the midfield. This is an interesting call here, as that one looked like it crossed the midfield line before the defender touched it. And, and note, this is a new rule in the MCLA and NCAA that's really catching everybody off guard. If the ball crosses the midfield line and a defender touches it, it's an immediate turnover. So uh, at that time, though, defender able to, to pitch the ball far enough to where ASU wasn't able to use it in transition. And we saw that rule affect uh, yesterday's games quite a bit, and especially in some goal-scoring situations, because if, if the defense doesn't touch it, obviously, then the other team gets the ball because you let them get the ball. But if you do touch it, it's an automatic turnover, and if the offense is able to, to uh, come up on that right away, it's an immediate scoring chance, especially if they have numbers and catch the defense off guard. So we'll see, see if that'll play out in that uh, situation. Piquel with a chance. He had an opening, but instead decided to try and drive it inside before he's met by a body. Nice job on the defense. And here they, they're going to say that that was a passing attempt before Piquel was able to get the shot off. So Stanford is awarded possession. That's a big stop for the Cardinals. Still a 1-0 game. ASU with the lead. The lone goal coming from Billy Main. Making it across the field with a nice clear. Was Bryant Seaman, senior captain for the Cardinal. Nice play right there. A pass inside as Bax found Doyle. Actually, it was Hamamoto who had been coming around from behind the net, and uh, that's a that's a beautiful looking play there. And Hamamoto wasn't able to convert. Yeah, just like Mitchell Drake did this an assignment there and uh, had a back turn was streaking to Hamamoto coming into the center of the right to the net. And, uh, the ASU defender right on him didn't have a chance. Peter Doyle on the far side of the field gets it all the way back up top for Eric Lee. Lee going to slow things up, waiting for something to develop here as he draws Zach Long all the way out of the box. Lee now going to take on the isolation, decides to drop it down low for backs. The Stanford offense being very patient, and so far they've gotten quite a few good looks. Lee again going to take on Long. Can't find the opening he wants. Tried to get it back for Doyle or Hamamoto, but that one trickles out of bounds, and ASU will take over. And that's, that's a tough pass right there. ASU doing a nice job of keeping the middle of the field well covered, making sure no, no uh, gaping open lanes open up, and forcing Stanford to take a little bit longer in their possessions than they might once more. Passing the ball around the front. ASU getting on their offensive set once more, and so far been an uncharacteristically uh, unoffensive game, I guess, so far. And I think both of these teams are starting to feel each other out a little bit uh, as as both very well-coached teams. And you can tell it's a bit of a chess match at the moment. Henry Archie has the ball up at the top waiting for Finn Wells to check on. Yeah, quite a few line lineup changes. You can see that the ASU is really tinkering with things. And that will be a lot of that going on early in the season. Not too much on offense, but especially on defense. Well, an ASU running 
a four pole defense right now. They substitute in any one of those poles as soon as one gets tired, as well as we're seeing a lot more of the attacking depth as well. Finn Wells finds an opening, but instead passes it back to X. This one picked off through the middle. And that was a pass attempted by Billy Main from behind the net. Got a really ambitious there, and a long stick. Maybe he was able to pick it off. Tough pass to make those four guys. Uh, you have to get that to the problem. He was able to pick it up. Right over the net. Completed. Well, Billy Main is known for his passing abilities on the team. As losing track of that ball was Montana Morris. So he's coming up with the turnover. They're heading back the other direction. Looks like Zach Long. Actually, Timmy Nathan Blair, the freshman defenseman who brings it all the way across, gets it up to Tyler Buck. Now Henry Archer will check it into the box. And a quick shout out, uh, thanks to a tweet from Mark David Rolowitz. A shout out at Liberty University, Bryce Morakovich and Tommy Rolowitz. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, we appreciate appreciate you tweeting at us. Finn Wells on the far side of the field. Thought about passing for a moment. Now finds a man. This shot taken the best high. Looked like Tyler Buck on that shot opportunity. Nice and Dan Davis with the ball. We haven't seen too much of him so far today. Davis does get through now and takes a bounce shot, but it's going to miss the net entirely. And they will rule it in ASU's favor, though, as it looked like Tyler Buck chased that one down. And actually, it's Sage Duvall who chased that one down. The freshman is happening. Yeah, nice defensive play right there by the defender for Stanford Seaman. Yeah, he's been all over the field so far today. And all over Davis, too, especially. He got his hands right as he took the shot. And Davis with his quick hands, unable to come around the net. And gets a weak opportunity off. And we're also seeing Seaman in the clearing game. Uh, playing a huge impact in this matchup so far. A pass inside, shot taken. That one looked like it rung off the post. And that shot was from Sage DeVault. But Stanford able to come up with the save. Josh Giglio now working it into the clear. Stanford is moving fast. Peter Doyle brings it across the midfield line. It's actually Amamoto who has it. Yamamoto tries for a little bounce pass there. It's broken up at the last minute, and ASU comes up with a turnover. Nathan Blair shoots up the ground ball, and they've got some numbers heading back the other direction. Blair tries to drop it low, and I think that one was picked off, and now it's on the ground. Still searching for this ball. Finally, Finn Wells able to scoop it up after Peter Doyle fan on it. So Wells will bring it in, and ASU's going to set up, unless they're still in transition here. Wells now looks inside. That one sticked aside. Now Wells has a chance of his own. He scores! Finn Wells, ladies and gentlemen, making that top shelf risk. Well, ASU got tired of moving the ball around and trying to set things up, so we had a slow environment. The net Finn Wells wasn't right there. A couple of passes in the last couple of minutes, but that was something they needed because they were keeping themselves in this game early on. 2-0 lead now for the Sun Devils. These are guys you never would have heard on last year's uh, run to the title or, or to the title game. Travis Leach beats in. Stanford defense looks sluggish. No communication equals defensive breakdowns. And uh, it certainly has been a little bit of, of an error with communication. And, and both times we've seen these shots get off for ASU, they've been wide open attempts. Right. It's not as if these players have had to make a nice move. And Hand comes up with a face-off win. He's working all the way down into the box. He's met by a couple bodies. This one's loose in front of the net. Giglio has it. That's what Zach Hayden's on the field for, man. He's one of the best, if not the best, face-off man in the MCLA, and he might be even better this season. That'll be scary, but that's the signature play right there. Grab the ball, break that field. Yeah, the a turnover place. here for ASU in their own side of the field. Brian Seaman was on the clear there. Not sure how that one got picked off. As Zach Handy is still out there for the Sun Devils. He'll check out right now as he gets it off for Piquel. Davis with it in the far corner. And we're seeing a lot of Zach Long in the long stick midi uh, as he's the number one LSM on this roster. And he's really making uh, his presence known mostly on the defensive side. But he's also been doing a pretty good job of keeping the ball moving in the clear. He's long come off now as Denis comes on. He's flying, tries to pass it off for Devolver. Actually, Carrasco at the top of the midfield. And so Sam 
Stayer had it for a moment, had to drop that one as it was a call made against Cardinal. Denis drops it down low. And Sage Duvall gets it up top for Carrasco. And again, please tweet in at us if you uh, notice any technical difficulties you have with the broadcast. If you just want to pitch in your thoughts, we'd love to hear Cooper Vickell at the top. Gets it off for Denis. Denis evades one man but decides to pass down low. Nice tic-tac-toe pattern there. Up from up top, Cooper Vickell winding it up. But that one just barely missed the mark. It's a nice ball movement there from ASU. Some good defense there as well for Stanford to keep, keep in place. ASU, like you said, it's tic-tac-toe. It's a three. Yeah, trying to spread the ball. Yeah, it was good ground ball recovery from Sam Steyer. As now Stanford working all the way through before it sticked aside. And that was Hunter Irvin who was trying to take it into the box himself and met by a couple ASU defenders and they stick to three. So thank you, Kim. Hard to believe. It took a while for that to happen and Stanford trying to get that quite different story this season for ASU, but it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the game plays out. But even then, if ASU does win, they're a team that not many are expecting to repeat that kind of undefeated streak, but based on the early season going so far and the, and the talent that does remain on this roster, some of the freshmen that, that we've seen so far, it could be very possible that this team has a season like they did last year. 2 0 lead for the Sun Devils at the start of the second quarter. And this one's going to be a technicality going against Zach Andy, so Stanford will take it. A chance here for them to jump out right right away in the second quarter, get on ASU. And they were trying to work in transition right there as uh, Thomas Barger, who took the face off, was, was trying to streak down the middle, but didn't get open enough. And Barger, a senior, you mentioned a lot of these names are seniors as a goal-scoring effort there, coming around from the far corner, Montana Morris. A nice goal-scoring effort there. He took a body check as he got that shot off. So Stanford cuts the lead in half with Montana Morris's goal. Now Handy able to come up with this face-off win. The Sun Devils are moving the other direction. That just goes to show you that how important those face-offs are. When, when even though you lose on a technicality, Stanford gets that possession. Handy working this one inside himself. Was looking for a pass. Tries to move the ball away, and it sticked out. Ground ball recovered by Stanford, and being mopped by a lot of ASU offensive players, but still with it as coming up with that recovery for Stanford was Jack Payette. But now ASU with an offensive chance, and this one's still free. Giglio has it. He's going to send it all the way down the field to the midfield. And we're seeing Stanford in transition right now as Hunter Irvin brought it into the box. A shot taken. That one missed the mark, but Stanford still has possession. Hunter Irvin with it up top. Looking for the pick from Eric Lee instead. Passes on that one. Irvin going to try working. Get some solid defense and Stanford slowing things up a little bit. You know they'd like to get the game, the game scoring goal, game tying goal, uh, as soon as possible. Yeah, they also want to keep this game at their pace. Absolutely. Playing a team like ASU, if you can get them playing more your game, it's always an advantage. And Jonathan Bax trade spots with Hamamoto. Hamamoto looks up top and finds Eric Lee. Eric Lee looking for a pass to Irvin, and Irvin just couldn't see it into a stick. Yeah, just the defense there from ASU held up long enough, and Stanford unable to get any kind of penetration or any good looks. And it's going to force a turnover eventually. A nice job by ASU there to force that one. So ASU brings in the offensive side as Cooper Piquel looks inside for Davis. That one missed the mark, but picking this one up. Looks like Kyle Denis swung on in there. Heads up play by the senior midfield. They really want to execute there, though. ASU had one defender right in front of the net, two, uh, two attackers, Davis and the, the ball. And quite a chance they had there, but well, again, an errant pass from Piquel. Opportunity missed. And lots of uh, WCLL coaches tuning into this, maybe trying to get a look at Stanford. Matt Blaney from Dominican has this up on the big screen. Pancho Ojeda from 
Sonoma State also tuning in as working inside, Tommy Carrasco scores! Carrasco just blew past one defender along the baseline, or along the low line extended. Nobody was was coming in there. Yeah, she see her father's going all the way down the field, I guess. Oh, and it's I something that well, ASU has done yep. a lot in the past. Yep. Uh, Dylan Westfall was a guy who frequently found his way uh, down the field. But uh, we, we didn't see it much from DeLuca. We didn't see it much from Preston Anderson, who have been the last two goalies that have started for the Sunday. It looked like Sanford took the opportunity they had, though, to, to lay a hit on Rufanis. They don't get that chance often. So they uh, took their opportunity. So ASU now starting up, and they are a man up. Pickell. Drops it low for Davis. Davis gets it back they are dangerous to X. And remember, extra man units look a lot different than anything else as Finn Wells has worked from behind the net. Shot taken from deep as uh, that was Kyle Deneen winding up. Interesting that they would settle for such a deep shot, especially on the man-up opportunity so quickly into the chance. Well, I, you know, I think that it's just a question of what the risk is as Deneen thought about it again. Piquel back to Deneen. Now looking down low for Davis, who misses just a hair off the mark. ASU still looking to capitalize on this EMO. Davis down low for Wells. Davis now with it. He has some space. Instead decides to get it back to, to Wells. Now the pass shot and score. Kyle Denis worked his way inside. No one was on him. Didn't have a single body watching him. And an easy pass from Finn Wells for Kyle Denis to put it away. 4-1 lead for ASU. And again, for those of you wondering what, how much time is left, we actually don't have a clock. Uh, if it comes close in the fourth quarter, we'll keep a stopwatch on this game just to give you an idea. But uh, for right now, we do not have any access to a clock on the field. Another type of county loss there for, for Andy. And interesting to see because they now even in face-off draws. Well, and, and remember, uh, the face-off rule changes are impacting people in a lot of different ways as far as when they can start their clamp or, or their routine. Andy, you would figure, or a lot of what he said and a lot of his game, that the rules won't affect him as much. But early in the season, have seen what the calls uh, made on Andy so far, so perhaps it'll be more troubling than anticipated for the senior. Irvin gets it up top for Barger. Now an open opportunity there, a shot taken from Baxter. But he's way off the mark, and I think that late body check the last second put him off his game. That was from Ryan Burns. So far, this ASU defense that we've been calling inexperienced right. certainly doesn't look very inexperienced. Yeah, they're doing a nice shot with a lot of movement uh, from the Stanford, especially moving the ball around, right? keeping their guys covered and shutting off all lanes. And we've seen Stanford not getting many shots on net. That's very much a product of ASU's pressure so far. Great coverage right there from the Sun Devils, not even just a defender on the man, but everyone right front of the net. Hamamoto looks inside, shot taken from Irvin, but a uh, nice save from Rufanis coming up the ground ball recovery was Zach Long, and that's a big stop for the Sun Devils defense. That's a great shot opportunity from Irvin, and I think Rufanis just played it better than him. Yeah, good defense even there, Rodney. But Irvin was a better play uh, than anyone covering him, and it gets off a nice shot, but Rufanis takes it big, he makes the stop that he needed to. And it's hard to believe Rufanis, this is only his second career start as uh as a sophomore who sat behind Chris DeLuca all of last year. Tyler Buck sends this one all the way back and a smart call considering if the ball goes past that midfield line, it's gonna be an immediate turnover. Stanford watching this ASU offense set up. Henry Archie with it up top, gets it down low for Davis. We really still haven't seen too much of Dan Davis, but as I say, he works his way around, tries for an over-the-shoulder shot. Yeah, his body still turned all the way down field, just almost got it on that. Oh, it was it, yeah. his credit, not a bad one. He uses his quick hands, that's what he's out there for. And, it, and it's still a possession for the Sun Devils, as it looked like back to get it was Sage Duvall. Up top with it, Archie gets it off to Wells on the near side. Now down low for Davis. Davis tries for the pick from Wells. Wells now with it behind the net. In face with some tough defense, tries for the spin move. Good help D by Stanford. The long pull was there. Tommy Walker to fourth. And that's one thing about the Stanford 
team. There are a lot of the four. I think there's three of them on this line. That's another thing about this team, yeah. Uh, I may be wrong, there are only two. Oh. But still, how many, how, many teams, a lot. how many teams have, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met a fourth in my life. So that's, I'd say it's a significant statistic. It is. Stanford now working their way <laughs> to the other side of the field, trying to set their offense up. As uh, bringing it across there was Chris Rendon. Got to be getting pretty low here at time in the second quarter. So Stanford, I'm sure they're more aware of the clock than we are. We saw at the end of the quarter last, uh, last excuse me, in the first quarter, they moved pretty quickly to end things, but here they're taking their time. But we got to imagine, even if there is some time for possession here, they want to get a couple goals if they can before the half. I guess they can get a little bit closer. And, uh, Peter Doyle has it up near the midfield. Doyle hasn't made a statistical mark in this game so far. Wines on this one, a bounce shot misses off the mark. And uh, that will actually ricochet its way back on the field. Stanford gonna bring it in back. Tries for a pass up top instead, holds it himself. Couldn't fool that defender though, as Hamamoto with the shot opportunity. And this one will stay with Stanford. And Hunter Irvin looking to get some stringent short pole defense. Oh, pass opportunity across the crease for Bax. And Bax was there with it, but instead he bobbled it for a moment and the ASU defenders came crashing in. Ball is still on the ground, finally sent for Dufanis, but it is scooped up. They had a chance, Zach Long there went for the ball and missed. And so if Bax was able to hold on, they had a one no opportunity right in front of the Bronx. We've seen a lot of Jeff Sanchez on the field, another newcomer for these days at Arizona State Sunday's. And ASU currently holding a 4-1 lead. With 28 newcomers on this roster, we're going to be seeing a lot of different guys throughout the season. And seeing who out of these uh, incoming freshmen, uh, transfers, and, and uh, graduate students could be coming out of nowhere for ASU and make an impact on this team. I guess you're slowing things up right now. You have to imagine the quarter's got to be close to coming to an end. As Denis trying to find an opening, he shoved it the last second, gets it down low for <laughs> Devault. Devault being met by some tough stick defense from Tommy Walker to fourth. Although I haven't yet said it, Brian Seaman is technically Brian Seaman fourth. ASU. Still getting his offense set up. Carrasco on the field. That's another impact freshman who's starting on this first line midfield with Cooper Piquel and Kyle Denis. But that was likely looking to kill time here. He's getting less couple minutes of play in the second quarter trying to hold that two goal lead. Looking at Carrasco, uh, what, what better could you ask for than ending up with two All Americans on your line? Absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful way to step into your career. And, and call benefit even him in the future, just learning behind uh, these guys on his, on his team, Denis and Piquel. Denis drawing that isolation, now looking back up top for Piquel, and we're going to see a shot here from Long, that one missed the mark just barely, and that's Billy Main who tipped that shot, now sticks the ball free from Peter Doyle, that's a nice play by Main, and so ASU will still have possession. Nice job picking up that ground ball. As Carrasco lost his footing for a minute there. Now gets it back up top to Denis. And Carrasco did earn a lot of praise for his play in that fall ball tournament down in Tucson, which they played against GCU and Arizona. And, and after ASU lost both of those games, a lot of people, that's kind of when that speculation started that this roster uh, might not be quite what we thought it was. And then uh, a couple of the, the departures that we saw, including Adam Beecham, really shook that up a little more. However, with the way as you played yesterday, coming up with a big 14-6 win over Cal, and uh, the way they've continued to play in the first half here today, as Carrasco scores! Carrasco went way high to way down low, and Giglio, I, I think that might be on him. He should have seen that one through, but Carrasco placed it well, and uh, perfect timing as well. With uh, the first, first five minutes, he is big source of offense this season, they hope, and, and that'll be, boy, what a boost that would be for the Sun Devils. You can have Kakel, Denis, and a Carrasco performing at a high level. 
And for those of you wondering what's going on on the other field, USC is up 5-3 to three over Cal in a very low scoring affair. As Zach Handy comes up with this face-off win, a nice ground ball recovery sends it back to the midfield line where it's scooped up by Graham Malik. And Malik is going to see time on that face-off wing, but not much beyond that. See if they can get another goal or two here to end the half. That would be a killer for Stanford. They're staying well close in this one. Buck had an opening. Pass it across the way. That one was picked off. Stanford going to head back the other way. They've got some numbers and some momentum. Hamamoto has it on the near side of the field. Nathan Blair on him. They're going to be going to be a timeout called. So we can imagine there's only a, a, a limited amount of time left in this half. And Coach drew down some football for you guys. You got it all. Remember, we'll also be bringing you the next game this afternoon, which has a 2.30 start time between Arizona and Oregon State. You don't want to miss that one either. Arizona looked very good in a 14-2 win over Oregon in yesterday's action. Stanford coming out of that timeout trying to get their offense in rhythm. Baxt tries to make a move around Mac Reagan, but he falls to the ground. Reagan quickly jumps on him, but Baxt able to get back to his feet. Hamamoto from behind the net, trying to work past Blair. A nice job there from Mac Reagan to stick that one down and scooping it up with Zach Mathian. That's some great team lacrosse right there. Mac Reagan came across the crease for help defense, and that that's that's really a great example of how this ASU defense is, is relying on one another much differently than they did uh, in that Whittier game. But right there, a turnover as Mathian got a little ambitious. Maybe it was Rafanis uh, who passed that ahead, trying to find... Uh, Jeff Sanchez. A pass inside, shot taken. Hunter Irvin again found that opening, but again, Chris Rufon has one up there. And this defense really doing a good job of shutting down that Hunter Irvin drive through the middle, it, even though it, it's gotten open as this pass intended for Colin McManus ends up trickling its way out of bounds. Yeah, the last effort there for Stanford, uh, their best one off that possession. Oh, and a turnover right there as McManus now going to have a chance. He passes him over. Maine, he scores! Billy Maine puts a goal on the board. The bench erupts. Colin McManus to Billy Maine. And, uh... Of the day, and all of a sudden, Stanford now down to four. After walking down to the one. 6-1, the lead for the Sun. Does that hand? He comes with a face-off win. Looks low. Davis tries for the quick bounce shot. Er, not much time remaining in this half. McMahon is able to chase that one down, and it's going to be ASU's ball. So we'll see if they can somehow come up with another goal late in this half. Maine over to Davis on the near side. Now up top for Archie. Well, there's enough time to get substitutions in here. As flag goes below. A pass inside misses the mark going to trickle its way all the way out to the far sideline and uh, looks like Finn Wells came up with it. A good job of taking the body by Tyler Buck to help Wells swoop in there and get that one up. Up top with it is Tyler Buck surveying the field looking for his options. He'll slowly work his way into the box and let this play develop. Dan Davis clearly calling for something as Wells now takes it. on this side of the field because of Davis. And Wells right there with a pass to Davis. An interesting setup for the Sun Devils right here, giving Wells a lot of room on his own to work. We'll see if they try to look back door and try to see if Stanford can overcommit to the side. Wells gets it up top for Buck. Buck now trying for Maine, who was barely able to track that one down, but keeps it in play. Now Archie. Archie suffered a bit of a stick ride, backs it up waiting for this play to form up. And there's still a flag down on the field. Stanford hasn't yet been able to touch the ball. Pass inside for Davis. He loses track of it. Stanford comes up with the ground ball. Looks like it's still in the air. Nobody's established possession. Now Stanford does officially touch it. And so they will blow the whistle. We'll get the... 
And again, we do not have a clock on this field, so uh, players just going by the refs count, and we'll see a timeout call by the Sunnies. With a commanding 6-1 lead right now, and they'll have the man up when we come back. So ASU you can get started early here. As they have a 6-1 to one lead to start off this half. Pickel, Davis, Wells all on the field right now. Davis takes a shot. Giglio able to see that one into his stick. Nice job there by Giglio. And Davis really has been rendered ineffective in both of this weekend's games. Even there, it's so pretty much an open, wide, out, wide open opportunity. Giglio, the shot right to the midsection. Doyle working his way past Buck. Doyle now with a chance and banned on that one. It went high in that play. But he had a man back for it at the baseline, so came on Moto. Or actually jumped it back. So it back there. And remember, please tweet in at us at Trey Lanthier, where you're watching from, who you're rooting for, uh, and, and anything else you might be thinking about this game. We'd love to hear from you as well as technical difficulties. Such a quick call there. Stanford with the dead ball. And still be on offense. Eric Lee with it in the near side. Montana Morris was Stanford's lone goal on the game. Eric Lee. Lee pulls past one defender now, looks for the pass inside, but that one looked like it may never have gotten to the stick of Montana Morris. Instead, a ground ball heads all the way back to the midfield. Let's see if it's going to be touched by a long pull for Stanford or an ASU attack at first, as it uh, looks like it's still being lost on the ground here. Finally, ASU with possession. Thundivals bringing it in, looking ahead in transition, trying to find Rhett Rogers was Tommy Carrasco. I think that one got lost. Now Sage DeVolt with a shot. But that one goes out of bounds. Finn Wells able to track it down. Good hustle by the junior. A nice job there from ASU to get him on the staff defense right away. They saw their opportunity. And even though Rogers unable to make the first play, they keep going at it. Get him. Quick opportunity. Nice shot there. And now they can set up and take your time for the rest of this possession. Mikel on the far side, trying to work past Payet. Now up top for Carrasco, makes a one nice dodge now. Kyle Denis is going to make a move. Denis earned the nickname TK for simply being tall as someone named Kyle. Mikel winds up and soars. Mikel took very little time on that shot. He had one slight window of opportunity and took advantage. Big body, quick able to hit it right there. So a 7-1 lead for the Sun Devils. As Henry Archie has it on the Sun Devils half of the field, they're moving quickly here. Pass down one score. Dan Davis comes up with his first goal of the game. And a nice little tic-tac-toe pattern. Stanford wasn't prepared for that quickness off the draw. This is really clicking. They're on a roll here. And uh, Nick Santiago and former son of Nick Hillier tuning in. And uh, they're asking, what is that field? And, uh, I, 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 we haven't talked too much about the field and the fact that there's only so much grass to go around. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. I, I, I don't think it's called a field. I think it's a, 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 a dirt patch surrounded by grass. That's the best way to go about it. Um, to, to, okay, the specific answer is this is the Drake Athletic Field uh, on the, UF, in the UCLA campus. So we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Ball here to start things off. So 
Star Wars. We'll never know. Yeah, we'll I mean, never know. That's just one of those things that fell into the abyss. We don't have an answer for you guys. Sorry about that. But a 7 1 lead for the Sun. It was actually 8 1 after that transition goal just a moment ago. And uh, Stanford offense still struggling to really get anything on the board. This ASU defense has looked very good in the early going. Body goes to the ground there as a nice play made by Doyle, who just collided with Zach Long and sent him to the ground. Now ASU in the clear, trying to move a little too fast. Nathan Blair trying to hold on to this one. He's met by a couple bodies. Blair, though, bringing it across the midfield line, and the freshman again coming up big in the clear. Now looking for the pass ahead. It got sticked away for a moment. Dan Davis comes up with the ground ball recovery, and they're going to slow things up and let their midfield check into the game. Just a reminder that we will be having the Arizona-Oregon State game coming up at 2.30. And you'll want to catch that one as well. Should be a great game. Right here on this uh, Drake Athletic Field. A pass inside for Davis. Goes for the ground ball bowling shot. And uh, just missed off to the right-hand side. However, back for it for the Sun Devils. Sage DeVault seeing a lot of time on the field. This is something else we haven't seen too much of from the ASU attack is is working depth into that attack uh, and, and we're seeing Sage DeVault sometimes out there, Billy Maine subbing in and out, so a, a different mentality I guess from what we saw with Malone's regime in the past. But also they had a lot more uh, attackmen to, to work with uh, of star caliber and, and Dan Davis looks for the pass across the way. This one broken up by a long pole. Now on the ground in front of Giglio. Wells is driving someone out of there, but he forgot the ball was still sitting there, and it's picked up and taken back the other way. Bryant Seaman, the fourth, again, very apparent in transition as he drops this one off. And Stanford trying to take advantage of the transition opportunity. Looks like ASU's defense is set up. Great job, I guess you'd be ready for it right there. And two more men, that's Stanford. And uh, Montana Moore has tried to make a spin move, then worked his way up top, and went with that bounce shot. Went wide, high over the cage. However, still Stanford ball as Bax goes back for it. Bax working against Ryan Burns, out of Hamamoto. Something interesting you'll notice if you look at this Stanford uh, recruiting classes is that they're all from different parts of the country. I mean, you, you have, I think the majority would be from California, but there are several New Yorks. There's a Boston, Massachusetts, a Houston, Texas. And, and I think that's one of the things about having the academic lure that Stanford has is they're able to get these, these uh, top quality lacrosse players who also happen to be top quality in academics as well. Yeah, that's what Stanford really posts about their university is the amount of people that they bring in from all over the country, all over the world, really. Diversity in the sense of where people are from and where they go from. And that just comes on to the, the, the sports fields naturally, especially for the rest of them. And a shot taken from up top from Hamamoto, missed off the mark, getting a tweet in from Donna Rufanis, who uh, I believe is the mother of, of Chris Rufanis. And the answer to your question, which is, uh, what's up with the goalie's numbers, is that uh, Chris Rufanis is, for some reason, wearing Cameron Moore's number or jersey. As a shot taken from deep, Rufanis with a save. Um, Rufanis is wearing Cameron Moore's jersey, and Cameron Moore is actually out for the duration of the season. Uh, with his shoulder surgery that he suffered, an injury he suffered during that fall ball tournament in Tucson. Rafan is typically number 45, currently sporting number one. ASU back on offense after that big Rafan save, and we're going to get a chance to see some of this ASU midfield again, top line as Denis comes onto the field, quickly working his way into the box. Now it's up top, Carrasco thought about a shot, instead gets it off to Piquel. Stanford playing some tough defense right now. Piquel up to Denis. Denis calling out a play. Piquel and Denis both captains on this year's roster, same with Dan Davis. Ryan Burns representing uh, the leadership on the defensive side of things.
Broncos captains will be huge for ASU this season. A shot taken from Brett Rogers. He scores! Rogers taking a shot from very deep and, and took advantage of the ground uh, in front of all Sun Devils here after the first quarter. Stanford trailing in this one, nine to one. Another faceoff win for Zach Andy. Andy room. works into the box, looks down low, a shot, and another goal from Red Rogers. Very delayed celebration there as Rogers had his back turned to it, but he was able to come up with it. But what a pass from Zach Andy. That kid saw the open daylight in the middle of the field and said, we'll get a chance here. And Mapian, the recent recipient of the Best Flow Award <laughs> from Cronkite Sports. So if he wins this, that'll be the second best thing. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Only second best thing. Mathian does come up with a win over Barger. Mathian quickly moving back the other direction. A pass across the way and a goal! That one coming from Dan Davis. Are you sure that wasn't that handy on the faceoff goal? Because that is what happens. And this is, yes, exactly. Mathian well coached by Zach Handy himself. I believe that one was from Billy Mays on the near side to find Davis open. Just, just great play. Great play all around from the faceoff goal, especially. Another well, face-off win. Nathan was able to track down the ground ball himself. He's going to bring it across. And uh, Handy might have to be worrying about a starting spot. <laughs> hey, he said that in an interview earlier on this season. He said, I would love for any of these guys to take my spot because that means they deserve it and they earn it. And I think he means it. You see the smile on his face when he talks like that. He loves teaching the younger guys because he knows it's him. And then a bunch of inexperienced guys at the face-off circle, they're learning from the best. And I would imagine once Handy is gone from this team, they're going to be in some good hands. Mathian. Looks down low, misses the pass. He was intending it for Davis. However, Maine is back to scoop up the ground ball. Carrasco now bobbling a pass. However, he's able to hold on to it. Pikel up top in the near side corner. That's really where Davis' talent and ability is really going to come into play on this team because he's got the movement for this offense. They seem to be very much in sync, and, and it's a, group, a new group that they're so deep they all work together. Pikel finds an opening, fires that one ricochets all the way out of bounds, but it'll still be ASU possession as Carrasco was there. So you know, that Davis is just going to be the guy to be in the right place at the right time. He's got such a fast shot, quick hands, and he, he moves uh, so well from that, from the side of the net that it really, we might not see him be as much of a key cog in the offense on an every play basis, but he's going to be a guy they're going to go to and need him to just finish off plays. Pickel looking for the pick from Denis. Now gets it back to Denis, who is open. That shot is way high, though. And that's one of the things about Denis' shot. It's, it's high risk, high reward. It often finds its way out of bounds. You always have to have someone back for it. Yeah, well played there. Design play. Denis, with a lackluster effort, almost on, in, intentionally, just seemed to make it look like he was out of the play, and the pass came right away. He was left wide. Pickel into Rogers, who goes with the bounce again. This one picked up by May. Now shot from Denis, and again, he misses high. And I can guarantee you, Denis has got to be frustrated right now because that's a goal he should have had. An identical miss right there, two in a row from the same spot. Going high over the right post. <coughs> so, offense is working at such rhythm right now. Absolutely, absolutely. And you can see that there's always someone back. And, and I think the most important example of that was when Maine was able to pick up the Red Rogers miss. And Denis now fans on a pass, loses track of the ball. Denis not having himself a very good possession there. Stanford heading back the other way. And he open opportunity. They score! Montana Morris with his second of the day in transition. There were two guys. We're still in the third quarter. And it's, it's never going to be called over until that final whistle blows. As Doyle looks down low for Irving. Okay, so all, the all the momentum right now, but that could shift. Give him the last goal and the opportunity. Hamamoto inside, and that's another goal. Barger comes through. Wide open, unprotected in front of the net. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was the hour. Been so now the faceoff won by the Sun Devils. It looks like that is handy back out there for ASU because maybe they let their, their foot off the gas a little too early, but still with a very comfortable 11-3 lead. Two quick balls for Stanford. 
is, because that's what San Fran is out there for. It's important for them to get the ball back and get things going back on their side of the offensive field. Archie looks down low for Davis. Main up top to Buck. As you get in that second midfield line out there as well as checks into the game. Slowing things up. And the Stanford defense has an extra pep to its step. You can see they're getting all the way out there and meeting these ASU midfielders at, at the point of contact. Maine looks up top. Wells has all the time in the world. And he missed the mark there. Maine was back for it, though. Three-step windup right there for Wells. He's had a wicked shot, but unable to get it on Gigli, of course, and make the save. And uh, getting some tweets in here. Sarah Crawford says, we are loving the broadcast of today's game, rooting for ASU, and our son, uh, Rustin Crawford, number 46, hashtag Go Sun Devils. Nice move from Archie trying to find an opening. Can't get past the second man, though. Buck looks off to Wells. Buck now with it with some time up top. Looks inside, and a goal! ASU! Dan Davis posted right in front of that net. Actually, that's Colin McManus who came up with the goal for ASU. Posted right in front of the net and was you. Man's with a man all over. That's why he did a nice move. Here's a faceoff. Mathian back in there for the Sun Devils. Ground ball. Looks like Stanford may have it, and they do. Coming up with that ground ball was Sam Steyer. Stanford now going to try and get set up. 12 to 3 the score. As Kamamoto has it in the near side corner, gets it over to Baxt. Baxt getting some rough stick checks from Ryan Burns. On the near side for the Cardinal. Now John Romer in this game, junior attackman. Romer getting defended by Mitchell Drake. Seen a lot of Stanford's depth come into play here as freshman Joey Murphy checks into the game, a 6-1 attackman. And Murphy actually playing up the midfield. As Hunter Irvin tries to work past a tough ride. Murphy went with the bounce shot, that one over the head of Rufanis. He actually misread it, but Fortunately for the Sun Devils, goes over the net, and uh, Rufon's able to track it down. Now heading in transition, looks like this is Henry Archie, and Archie quickly finds Dan Davis. Davis trying to ride the pick from Archie, now back down to his midfielder, who's going to bring it back up and reset on the offensive side. Uh, something better before settling for that kind of opportunity with two men all over the ASU now. Back in their rhythm. See Connor Ebner on the field for ASU now. In the near side corner, Sage Duvall getting some tough defense from Seaman. Ebner with it up top. This is that third midfield line. As Matthew Caval also in there. This ball goes sky high and scooped up by the Sun Devils. Ebner up top to Caval. Caval over to Mathian. Mathian also playing as a midfielder, not just a Fogo. And it looks like a timeout was called. Or actually, it'll be the end of the third quarter. So ASU. And that means Cal is 0 with 2 to start the year. Actually, 0 3, considering they lost to Santa Clara in overtime a week ago. Yeah, USC, an impressive start to their season. Already, already up in their win total from a year ago. Three so far, only two in that season. A tough start to the Ned Webster era there. Zach Mathian with a quick face off win. Passes off to Sage DeVault, who falls to the ground before he can get the shot off. Maybe a bit too eager there, as he saw. Uh, such a great chance yeah. to come up also, with that also shot. in that dirt. Plenty of dirt over in that patch right where it was. His footing might be uh, a little tricky on that side of the field. What a win there by Mathian. Great look. Face also had such a strength for this team. It 
it, it gives them at least two to three goals a game based on how quickly they can get off the draw and create an opportunity. But they continue the kind of success they have winning winning faceoffs and pushing the, the, uh, the ball downfield a couple times a game like that and getting some goals from it. That's a huge push for the Sun Devils. And it's, it's probably a key category. And the Sun Devils, 1 0. They beat Cal yesterday 14 6. USC having a pretty nice weekend in the Pac-12 shootout. They were able to beat Washington in convincing fashion on Saturday and then came up with a win today as well. USC a program headed up by Chris Boland. They're really hoping to improve on a 2-9 and nine year from 2014. It was really a disappointment for that program. Pass inside, shot taken from Davis. Missed the mark as a nice stop at the net, and I think a lot of that was just the, the defense converging. As we're actually seeing a change in goal. Zach Ellison is now in the cage, another senior goalie. He's also a captain on this roster, and I tell you what, that hair beat Zach Mathian's hair. If he if he were, were to be playing for ASU, he would have won Best Flow. Maybe next year we'll have to expand our Best Flow award to, to beyond just ASU. So a Stanford turnover, problems in the clear. Davis looks for a pass across the way, but it's sticked aside. Nice job in transition defense. And it did leave the backside completely open, though, so the pass did get across the field. It would have been a wide open chance right in front of the goaltender, but luckily the sticks, a nice defensive effort there, getting in the way of the pass, at least not letting it get by. 12 to 3 the score. We're here in the fourth quarter, ASU. Number two in the country, 1 and 0 on the season so far. Open to improve to 2 0. Stanford trying to make a comeback in this one. Having a bit of trouble working the way the ball into their offensive side. ASU has commanded time of possession. On the far side, goal scoring effort. Henry Archie. Archie blew past one man, knew he only had a moment before he was going to be shoved to the ground, and took that shove as he got the shot off, or lack thereof, uh, as, as he's not a very big guy. So his pole seems to be bigger than he is, uh, but, but definitely a very hard-working local player out of Frey SU. And he comes up with that ground ball right there on the face-off win for Mayfield. Interesting to see ASU still sending out that top midfield line, not getting comfortable yet with their 10-goal lead here in the fourth quarter. Going to work the ball around the horn a little here, kill off a little more clock. As Piquel has it up top, now to knee. Everyone getting a little bit of a touch on this, is, except for man in the middle, which looks like it's Tommy Carrasco. Shot taken from the far side. That one swallowed up by Ellison. Free ball, ball movement by the Sun Devils, and then the ability to recognize when uh, the purpose of the ball movement when it came to fruition. The guy was open on the far side. And Ellison now working his way all the way to the midfield line before he passes it off and a bit too far ahead of his midfielder. So Ellison may be a bit too ambitious there. But you have to appreciate the effort. Absolutely. Nice hustle all the way to the midfield. And so again, we do not have access to a clock, so we can't exactly tell you how much time is left. Uh, we're just estimating any time we give any time estimates. A shot swallowed up by Ellison. Wells was right there in front of the net, took a shot, but Ellison able to stand his ground. Our estimates were pretty far off at the end of the first half. So it's true. We're gonna, it's true. So uh, we're not, we, we don't have a very good yeah. track record, but... Uh, Especially in their formations, and they, they let too many opportunities in close on the finals, but they're... Doing a great job today of clogging the lanes and keeping Stanford around the perimeter, and not getting many great shots. Everything's coming from tough angles and off the side. And if they are getting anything over the finals, I can't imagine we've had to make more than five or so saves. And that's all because of this defense. It's doing a great job of a lot of pressure. From ASU, only waiting for the best of opportunities. Dan Davis makes his own best opportunity. There was a guy right in front of him, he said, I'm going to take the shot anyway. Puts it through, and that's a great example of why Dan Davis is one of the top. AK Dave Five, I'm assuming that's one of the Davis family members, says Davis family shout out to number two Dan Davis. And I don't think he can hear us from up here, but you know what? I'm pretty sure he's feeling that love. It's clearly he's coming up with some nice offensive power on the field. Davis, 
with it now as the ASU offense gets set up once more. We're seeing some more names that we haven't yet gotten on the field as Rustin Crawford is out there for ASU. Got a touch on the ball. Now he will check off. Crawford took the face off for this on that was done, but there was a technicality, so he didn't uh, come away with the, you know, a real I guess a real result on that one. Hey, hey, the technicality bad. wins. Yeah. It's a win. Yeah, there you go. And uh, yeah, it, Rusty Crawford, one of the face-off specialists under Zach Handy's wing, per se. Yes. Uh, that, that's or, really or, been, his, or his hand, because we, we yeah, like there you funds. Go. We like there funds here. That, that's true. That's true. We do. Portland Jones, we haven't seen much of him on the field. He did play in that championship game last year. How does it play out? Well, this loss alone, given that it is to the number two team in the country in ASU with the offense they have, it's not too worrisome. But, but uh, pack it together with what happened yesterday in Stanford, you know, they might be a little, uh, you know, thinking, all right, well, how can we approach uh, this, thing, this thing a little differently? A wind-up shot there. taken on by Mayfield. Because for Stanford, you know, things are working for them, especially... Pass inside the crease, and goal! Arizona State with another goal scoring effort. This time, Henry Griffith driving through the lane, finds an opening. And he's got two top lines. Right? Close to the get. Group out there on this team to figure out who their extra depth is going to be. And Peter Tumbus from uh, 412 Lacrosse and also a former coach at Pitt. Uh, actually coached Henry Griffith over the summer, said he's a human bowling ball, never met a shot he didn't like. And right there, he, he did take a bit of a, a, a hit to the body, but it was his ability to post up right in front of the net that really paid off for him there. Well, back to Stanford, as we're talking about things to take away from them. On the offensive side of the ball, they, they did have some nice movement, but their execution just was not there. They were one pass away, and, and their shots misfiring. So for them, they are going up against a stout Arizona State defense which played very well today and their pressure has been uh, all over the place. But, but Stanford themselves, they, they didn't seem to have too much working for them getting their plays that they want to run. ASU was really dictating things after the first couple minutes of the first quarter on the defensive side of the field. So ASU now on the defensive side. Hunter Irvin tries to work through. Defense of Tyler Buck. Buck looks to be playing some short stick defense right now. Irvin makes a nice move, but his shot swallowed up by Rufanis. Nice play by Rufanis. Yeah, once again, just another example of what we're talking about. Where those shots are just coming from the side angles and not much they're getting able to do. You can't really get any shots or anything in front of the net. A long possession, possession right there ends up with weak shot opportunity. They've got to work on getting more of what they want. The defense is forcing them uh, to do, the defense is forcing the offense to do what the defense wants them to do. So for them, Stanford has got to be more about dictating their own pace of game, which they did early on when ASU settled in and really improved. Yeah, and Stanford getting another shot off right there. Following that defensive stand, Chandler Osberger with the turnover for the Sun Devils. Now driving inside, it's Hamamoto. Took a shot that one rung off the post. And now coming up with the ground ball is Zach Long. He's going to take it in transition. ASU heading back the other way with some speed. Nice shot by Hamamoto there being three guys on him. Sure Pass inside for Long. Missed the mark. Rhett Rogers, though, able to pick it up on the far side. And for those of you wondering, Rhett Rogers was taught everything that he knows by Nick Hillier. Literally everything. According to Nick Hillier. According to Nick Hillier, yes, we have to. But, I mean, Nick Hillier can teach your kid the alphabet. Oh, he can teach not kid. that difficult. Yeah. So. It, it, well, hey, no, I, I think it's pretty impressive okay, if teach it's literally him. everything that he knows. Okay. Brett Rogers having a pretty nice game so far today. That's Colin McManus also in the attack. I just got a lot of time on the field yesterday. Exactly. Seeing Henry Griffith out there, no Dan Davis at the moment, as a shot taken from McManus, he scores! McManus was wide open on that far side, and no one really paid. Last season, a year ago, when they didn't have much trouble at all throughout the schedule, whether it be, there were some close games against top tier opponents, but when they played uh, some of the lower level, especially the unranked teams, they actually did away with them pretty easily. We weren't sure that was going to be the case this season. Rustin Crawford was able to send the face off forward, but now a ground ball scrum as it's going to be Stanford ball. 
For Stanford, it's Seaman the fourth making his way into the offensive side of the field. Seaman still trying for it. It's dead pass enough. I like what you did with it. And this one's going to be a turnover. Hamamoto has to get the ball up. I think that's what he was going for. He's like, all right, we have three goals. You're right. You're right. So because he's fourth one. Tyler Buck gets it into the offensive half of the field. And Stanford also has a, a coach on their roster with the fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, maybe they recruit guys really specifically yeah, for that. This is a Stanford thing. Tyler Buck winds, fires off the mark. Scott Ackerman into the game for the Sun Devils. Joe Stone is looking deep on his roster right now. Finn Wells with a shot. That one saved by Allison. And still, though, picked up by Steyer. Stanford are going to try and head in transition, and they're going to make a call against Brian Seaman the fourth. Stanford has a lot of guys to work with, though, so late in the game. He's got plenty of options to say, hey, why don't we try out this time? Stanford comes up with a turnover, heading back the other direction. And, man, a lot of upsetness on the field right now coming. Courtesy of number 13 for the Cardinal, Chris Rendon. So ASU gets the ball right back. And this fourth quarter should be nearing a close. Uh, again, we do not ask at 2 o'clock, so uh, we're, we're sort of just ballparking here. but. Our estimate's usually off, so I, I should probably just not mention it. <laughs> Finn Wells thought about a shot instead with the pass, a little ambitious, and Ackerman got up for it. Nice play by Ackerman, but uh, just a bit shy of coming up with the, the reception there. But if he had, it's an easy yeah. goal. And this is a great idea because no one was really around Ackerman. There was nobody in the lane of this the pass. So it wasn't going to be turned over. Uh, the ball even did get to the stick of Ackerman. It was unable to corral it. Tough perception to make on this part. So now Stanford is trying to try out some new offense here. As Eric Lee looks for an opening. It's a great chance for some of these uh, deeper long poles on the AC roster to get a chance in this game. Lee thought about a pass as Doyle being shut off right now. Passes down low from X to Bax. Bax shoved to the ground, loses track of the ball, and they're now going to make a call. That's going to be going against this ASU defense for, for that hit. Bax tried to get into the center of the field, though. But there, there were four ASU defenders all over right away, and that's the job they've done all day long. Nobody able to cut right in front of Rufanis. Hard shot taken there. Nearly trickled its way past Rufanis. He was able to stop it just at the goal line. Now looks for a deep clear ahead. It got past an ASU midfielder, past the Stanford defenseman, and into the hands of Colin McManus. So it wasn't pretty, but uh, it worked as a, as a deep pass. ASU on the offensive side, McManus. Gets it up top. And that's Caval with it. Caval. Now looking low again for McManus in this ASU offense. We're hearing some of these names you, you won't usually hear, at least in the case of a close game. But uh, how, how about this ASU win? It came up with a big win against Cal yesterday, which a lot of people were thinking should be a game that, that everyone should be keeping an eye on. It's a potential upset from a, a very angry Cal team after an overtime loss against uh, underrated Santa Clara. But it, as it turned out, ASU ran away with it, and they're running away with this one as well. A low to high shot taken there from the middle of the Stanford defense from Henry Griffith. Just missed the mark, though. Yeah, ASU, we talked about before the broadcast, the tension or the uh, expected tension that might be surrounding the team after the end of last season, running a new head coach, new program. A lot of new players on this team. McManus sweeps his way in, takes a shot, a flag is down. 
and he was he was rolling before he ever got to the net, and he's able to get to his feet. ASU going with an all. ASU's one of the strongest points of their game, is moving the ball around with the man up. But the results here on the weekend. Very positive ones for the Sun Devils. We talked, as I was mentioning, just the question marks that surrounded this team, but those seem to have disappeared. Pass down low for Wells. Now for Davis. He takes a shot. That one saved by Ellison. And that's not very often you see Davis miss from point blank range like that. Working the ball up around the upper half of the, of the field and let the defense forget that Dan Davis existed. It's hard to do, but nice moving by SU first with a chance for Davis. And scooping up the ground ball for ASU's defense. Number 12, Chandler Osberger. Osberger likely the fifth pull on this team right now. Pass inside, body laid out, and down on the field is a Sun Devil. See if we can figure out who this is. We just took a rough check. Looks to be a little okay. And it's Henry Griffith. Fans, getting a bit of support there. And we were talking about it earlier, Griffith uh, scouting report. He's a tough guy. A tough guy. He's willing to take a hit. And that's an example of that right there. It was just laid out a moment ago. Yeah, you gotta wonder. He's still limping off the field, so he might be in some pain or might have an actual injury, but there's some toughness, he's not going to want to show it. He's going to get off the field if he can. They've been sitting there for all day long for a son that was going to have really got to be happy with both these games. Just to get him. ASU offense. Back into it set. And I, and I agree, Brett, the Sun Devils have a lot to be excited about with how they play. And they've got a tough schedule up ahead. And this, this is not an easy road for ASU in what could be, you know, what many are calling a possible transitional year, considering the fact that a new head coach, a new system in place, uh, they've got to play. Their next game will be at UC Santa Barbara on February 28th. And to be fair, that game doesn't seem as daunting as it may have a couple weeks ago, considering Santa Barbara has really had trouble. In, their next game, though, is at Cal Poly, who's looked very good in the early going to their MCLA play. And then, of course, you've got the number one team in the country, the defending national champions, Colorado. Yep. All that. Can't look past that. And then the next two days after that, Colorado State. So four straight games after this one against ranked opponents, top in the top of the country. You mentioned UCSB not, uh, may not be the same team we expected them to be, but Cal Poly looks even stronger. Cal in Colorado just a bunch of it's going to be a tough road for ASU ahead, and it starts right after this game. Well, you can't even look past uh, San Diego State anymore. They, they were able to beat BYU. So, Grand so there's Canyon still on the schedule oh, later on in the season. Grand Canyon, a top ten team that could be even better than that throughout the rest of the year. And and, and you can't call games against Liberty and Texas cupcakes either. Liberty was nearly in the tournament last year, except for the SCLC tournament and how that played out. Uh, Texas was in the tournament last year, so so there's a lot left on this ASU schedule, and then. And for Stanford, I, I think that this is a, a Stanford team trying to compete in the WCLL. And it's hard. It's hard because right now there are so many quality teams in the conference. You have Dominican. You have si or, uh, Sonoma State. You have Cal Poly. All of whom are vying for the top-notch title in that conference. A shot taken right there from Chris Rendell. The addition of Dominican into that conference just makes it tough for Stanford going forward to catch that tournament bid. It's hard to see more than three or four teams uh, from the top conference to get in there. A shot taken, score! Stanford with the goal scoring effort right there. Hamamoto came across the way, found an opening. The ASU, ASU with a commanding victory in today's action. They win this one 17 to 4. Stanford held on for that first quarter, very uh, competitive, back and forth. Well